Hi everybody. Today I will go through a little bit about Mercedes new EQS aerodynamics and how they have been able to get it the drag coefficient to 0.2 and how they have been able to make it so silent for the driver noise wise because aerodynamics affects a lot to the noise also. In comparison I have my ID3 there also where I will make some comparisons how it's been done in the ID3 compared to the EQS. And in the front of course you have the active grill blocks there, uh, those. But on the lower side you have about 20 mm height section which stays always open so it's not totally blocked I think never. Uh, but that's normal in all electric cars uh, where you have you want to lower the drag that you cannot totally close in normal situation that grills because if it gets stuck close then you're in problems and that's not good for good for the car uh, in the front the angles are like in normal cars aerodynamic cars that uh, the front bumper directs the air away from the front tire so it almost always goes past the front tire but here in the lower part you always have to think what happens when you drive to the curb and that's why the lower side is usually a little bit more inward so it's not anymore directing all the air pass but that's where the uh, uh, arc air curtains in the front comes to play difficult to get it seeing here but you have a hole here up to here it's about 25 centimeters height and where where the uh, air is not directed anymore past the tire you start to need to have this air curtain here so high pressurized air comes from the front this is here the entry I don't know you cannot see it oh, yes you can entry here is about 30 millimeter depth and when it comes to the exit side it's about 15 millimeter depth so you can put your finger there uh, on the lowest part it's tricky to put it there because there it's already so much inwards that it's really tricky to get the air blowing so it's not there also anymore and what comes to the uh, where's my measuring tape in my pocket uh, the front of the car you have these frontier deflectors they are a little bit curved let's see if I get it so here is a flap distance and the, it's a little bit curved backwards there and the height is changed based on how your lower A arms are there underside of the car so it blocks best that. Let's see. Tricky. And what the distances of the flaps are, it's about 50 millimeter height, the flat height maximum and to the ground if you measure at the moment it's uh, 95 really tricky to do everything at the same time but 95 to the ground and 50 millimeter height of the flat so the ground distance is about 150 140 millimeter at the front normal and underside of the car is totally flat there's nothing much to show there the suspension arms aren't covered at the front i think so they are just hanging there so here you could improve a little bit but it's tricky to do depending what kind of suspension geometries you have in your car uh, to get the noise down I believe here you have a quite deep pocket here and I believe this is for 
uh, noise reasons and maybe some future versions will have also exits air exits coming there maybe AMG versions or something like that but we will see that in the future and to get the noise reduction uh, wind noise down you have rubbers almost in all seams here blocking the wind noise so little whistle is coming only front door back side but on the rear door they don't care about the noise so much so here you don't have a rubber seal in the outside so it's not blocking there so much the sound also what lowers the inside noise is that the front door panel is actually you can see it's upwards from the mirror so moist, more, more, more noise comes from the underside of the or lower side of the mirror and when the noise starts to travel towards the driver or inside the car this will direct the noise a little bit inside the car to other direction I believe that's the reason why they have done it like that maybe the front speakers are there so there you can also create noise cancelling maybe better with that because it's directly towards the coming wing noise uh, like with all modern cars the wipers are little bit under the direct line of air travel so this is little bit lower than air coming here it barely touches there the whole design is made so that it's like that these are angled a little bit upward so air can come up a little bit easier and maybe that lowers the wind noise also uh, this depth of these uh, are like 10 millimeters that's okay and it's really smooth when air passes alongside here to the back and here the depth is maybe under 10 millimeters so air doesn't hit so much and there's a little bit rounding there so it can exit nicely nicely and easily there and then the rear side front direct deflectors in the Mercedes brochures they said these are some cool triangle shaped deflectors no one has seen pictures of these but they are shaped like that it's tricky to see again there but there's a flat section on the outer side and on the center side there's a triangle shape which is a uh, little bit angled towards the ground and the height of these are uh, 20 millimeter is the height and to the ground you have here 12 centimeters to the ground and that's how they are also here in the rear you, uh, the A arms are not covered this version doesn't have the aerodynamic wheels so I will not discuss of those but there is the most aerodynamic versions which have aero rims and that lowers the noise and drag even more the EQS model lowers itself in sport mode 20 millimeters more down and that will lower the drag coefficient about 0.005 drag units and that's how they are able to reach the 0.20 drag coefficient total the Door handles are flushed in, like in Tesla's, similar way. I, I guess they come out when you press the buttons, so that lowers the track a little bit. And in the rear, you have also a place for exit vents there. They are not in use, this uh, standard version, maybe AMG versions, they are open, or the most aerodynamic versions they are open to lower the drag and give better cooling for the car 
you have a little uh, rear spoiler here to help with the track and give a little bit more downforce there at the rear uh, at the rear tires uh, the underside is also uh, hitting the tire from about 20 centimeters from the ground because it goes a lot of inwards due to curb driving situation again so you don't want to break that while driving to curb so they have to put it a little bit inwards but of course you could build there some kind of uh, rubber flaps or something and in the rear this one is a little bit more inwards than the tire so air can pass there nicely to the rear bumper and this will create a cutout line for the air to start flowing freely after that so that actually also lowers the track a little bit if it positioned correctly depending how the aerodynamics are designed in the car I will try to get a little bit how the underside looks here you can see some kind of air exit vents there is some kind of panel in the suspension arm I think at the moment you can see that there it's like 25 millimeters more down but when you lower the car at 20 millimeter at high speed then it's totally flush if you look uh, from the end of the car then it will go flush and that's what I have done also in my ID3 that I have tried to make them flush in the driving situation even I don't have the air suspension but that's how the tricks you do when you try to get maximum maximum load track coefficients uh, but I think there's still a little bit room for improvement uh, I don't know why uh, car manufacturers don't use the uh, D shape deflectors because it should give the best uh, uh, aerodynamic shape is the D shape and that's what I would recommend doing if you want to get the lowest lowest track figures this underside should be also closed but this is just the testing phase and I will make a better version later probably uh, in the ID3 I have opened my air curtains these were only holes here but there was no entry so I have put there a wall which now directs the air from the front to the uh, wheels pretty similar dimensioning here than in the Mercedes and it seems to work pretty well uh, for these arms you could build a little bit of spoilers here so air would pass more nicely past the wipers because they create a little bit of wind noise and also you could put something here rubbers and rubbers here like Tesla people have done they have put aftermarket rubbers there to lower the wind noise even more more in the car yeah that's the EQS I hope I'm able to get a test drive of this car and then I will see how it actually behaves and was this actually uh, the normal ride height I think it is if it's 150 millimeters now uh, from the ground so it will lower 20 millimeters first 10 millimeters if you drive a little bit faster or if you put the sport mode on it will go the 20 millimeter lower there's also active lift so if you try to speed pumps it will know those and see those through the radars or something and it will actually lift the car automatically so you don't break the uh, aerodynamic part so easily which are hanging hanging low there yeah thanks for watching and let's 
Let me know what I didn't notice in the car. I probably forget a lot of things what I planned to say of the aerodynamics of the car, but uh, this was one shot video and more will come. Thanks for watching and keep tuning your cars.